Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. A nice snowy day around here. Hopefully it is pleasant for you and not dangerous. And yes, it is a day of snow shovels. Yes, so, hey, we have to be fast today because I have to go over to Heber real quick. But let's begin with our prayer and say a little bit about this Sunday. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth to beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Today is the first Sunday of Lent, and every year we hear this gospel about the temptation of Christ in the desert. Christ's time in the desert, 40 days, it's the pattern for our Lent, but it's also a couple other things. Today, mostly, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the psalm. But like I said before, we have to go fast today because I have to go over to Hebrew. So don't mind, but it'll be good, I promise, or at least worthwhile. Thank you all for being here. All right, let's dig in. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, The priests shall receive the basket from you, and shall set it in front of the altar of the Lord your God. And you shall declare before the Lord your God, My father was a wandering Aramean who went down to Egypt with a small household and lived there as an alien. But there he became a nation, great, strong, and numerous. When the Egyptians maltreated and oppressed us, imposing hard labor upon us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and he heard our cry and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. He brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand and outstretched arm, with terrifying power, with signs and wonders, and bringing us into this country. He gave us this land flowing with milk and honey. Therefore, I have now brought you the first fruits of the products of the soil, which you, O Lord, have given me. And having set them before the Lord, your God, you shall bow down in his presence. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. You who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, Say to the Lord, my refuge and fortress, my God in whom I trust. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. No evil shall befall you, nor shall affliction come near your tent. For to his angels he has given command about you, that they guard you in all your ways. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Upon their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread, tread upon the asp and the viper. You shall trample down the lion and the dragon. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Because he clings to me, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he acknowledges my name. 
He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in distress. I will deliver him and glorify him. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what does scripture say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we preach. For if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For no one, for one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. For the scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, enriching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, one does not live on bread alone. Then he took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. The devil said to him, I shall give to you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I may give it to whomever I wish. All this will be yours if you worship me. Jesus said to him in reply, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Then he led him to Jerusalem, made him stand on the parapet of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him in reply, it also says, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed him from him for a time. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The fascinating episode of the temptation of Jesus in the desert is very cool. Notice that it's the spirit who sends him for the sake of being tempted. Now, we, we obviously have this same episode in other gospels too. This is Luke's version, but it's the spirit who sends him to be tempted with, with, this, with this finality in mind. Now, it's also the spirit who sends him to the desert, but then this experience with the devil takes him to the city, and in fact, to the temple. It's funny, like the direction of the spirit, which we assume is, you know, the spirit, the Holy Spirit, good, <laughs> is to the desert. But the devil brings him back to the city and to the temple. It's an interesting little detail. And of course, the very fun detail, which is how good the devil is at reciting scripture, <laughs> which for me is always really hilarious because, you know, it's like, oh, a pious kind of person definitely has the scripture under their belt. Well, also the devil. So just putting that out there, a little reminder. Now, <clears throat> what I want to do today, and I have to be short about this because it's time to go, actually. I just want to draw attention to the psalm. Okay, so for the first Sunday of Lent, the texts that go along with the Mass for the entrance antiphon, for the communion antiphon, the ones that we don't necessarily do in church anymore, 
um, also the psalm and the offertory, those little bits and pieces are all from Psalm 90, 91. You who dwell in the shelter of the Most High and abide in the shade of the Almighty and so on. Which is of course also, by the way, <laughs> that one that the devil kind of quotes the most in this interesting interchange between the Lord and him, which again, note is also in the other gospels. Note also, there aren't any other witnesses. The reason why this is here is very much for our benefit also just part of the kind of framing what's going on. The entrance antiphon today is particularly beautiful. Now, if you were here on coffee yesterday, I talked about those refrains of Lent, two kind of big ones. When you call on the Lord, he will answer. When you cry out, he will say, here I am. Listen to this thing. So this is from, it's in the Missal and other places too, but this is the entrance antiphon. When he calls on me, I will answer him. I will deliver him and give him glory. I will grant him length of days. Also from Psalm 9091. It's part of the same Psalm. Yesterday, we were looking at it from Isaiah 58. Today, it's like the other side in Psalm 91. When he calls on me, I will answer him, says the Lord. This time of Lent, which is very much patterned the over the, the, the 40 days of the Lord in the desert, where the spirit sends him to the desert, is also this time where we are on a really big way called to sit with trusting in God. We have this every year. And every year we're called to the same thing. Yes, those other things too, the kind of the typical practices of Lent, the fasting, the prayer, the almsgiving, these pillars of how our Lent is established. And yesterday we talked a bit about that interplay of how these things happen. We perfect it in church, in our prayer, and it is offered to God. Kind of like, by the way, at the beginning of the Deuteronomy reading, the priest takes what is given to him, places it in front of the altar and offers it to God. I just say the people give to the priest something. You can take that something to be whatever you mean. It's not just like an offering in a physical sense. It's also the prayer of all. The church works together in this way to make Lent a thing. But more important even than like the mechanics of how we do the Lent, and this is also this theme I want to really stress, Lent is not about checking, you know, Check, it, check marks on a list, you know, going down the list and making sure we're getting all the Lent things. But really it's about offering it all to the Lord and trusting him. At a time when there are things in the world which are scary, Russia, Ukraine, at a time when there are not so many scary things, we always need that reminder to trust fully in the Lord and in his providence. Nothing is more important for the life of the Christian, more important than charity, more important than practice, more important than knowing scripture even, <laughs> because as we mentioned before, even the devil knows that, but to trust in God. When we look at this episode of the Lord in the desert, the temptation, most importantly, he is trusting in God. This is, this is, again, part of that pattern. The spirit sends him to the desert. He does not yield to the temptations. He does not go for the quick comforts that come from what the devil is saying. Here, you can do this. Jesus knows he can do this. That's not a question. But the ease of simply grabbing it right at hand, that's the part where the Lord says no, trusting in the Lord first and foremost. In other versions of this gospel, it ends a little bit differently. Like in Matthew's version, that's when after the devil leaves, he's, the angels do come and minister to him and so on. And <clears throat> another one of these really wonderful moments is that he's taken to the temple. What an interesting thing for the sake of jumping off. What a very strange thing to do here's just one little point. Sometimes we, we think about our faith as those many things that we're able to accomplish and look back on, it's like, yes, 
I'm climbing it <laughs> and doing all those things. And the real charity, sure, of course. But even at that point, like you're climbing to what height and to what end just for the sake of jumping off. You know, that's kind of like how these, that's exactly how temptations work. If you, if you look in the background of my screen a little bit up there, there's a, there's a, there's a strange looking icon there, which I don't have time to show you right now. I wish I did, but it's great. It's, it, you see how it's like very like on a slant, it's a ladder. It's called uh, the Ladder of Divine Ascent. It's a book actually by a guy named John Climacus of 30 Steps to Perfection in the Spiritual Life. It's a very old book. And this is also a very old icon. It's the, the real one is in the monastery of St. Catherine in the desert. Um, I don't have time to show it to you, but I will put it in the chat. The idea of that and what's being depicted isn't just like, you know, going on a ladder up to God, but something else entirely, which is pretty astoundingly scary. This is a scary thing, which is, yes, yeah, so we have all these, these folks who are on the ladder going up, but there are also these, you know, awful harpy things which are taking them off the ladder. And even at the very, very top, at the very top of the ladder, even beyond someone who's identified as Anthony, as in famous Saint Anthony of the desert, the father of monasticism, you know, very great spiritual leader and such like that, someone who's beyond Anthony, who's taken down. That's also the image that we have in the gospel of going to the parapet of the temple. Anyway, it's not about the practices. It's about trust in God. Everything else doesn't matter. Okay, that's all I have time for today. Let's keep going. As we always do, let's bring our prayers together and offer them to the Lord that he will hear and answer us. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Bishop Oscar, and for all bishops, that they be protected from evil and all those who wish malice against them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families, that through the interse intercession of St. Joseph, the sanctity of the family will be protected. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we will have a fruitful time of Lent and be prepared to receive Christ on the day of his resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the despairing, that anyone who has turned away from Christ will find his love and return to him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people. That hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Just one more point. It's especially in temptation, in those moments of spiritual difficulty, when we must, first of all, call upon the Lord. Remember, that's the refrain for this Lent, and all Lent. When you call upon the Lord, he will answer. When you cry out, he will say, here I am. That's what trust in the Lord is all about. Okay, I have to go. Everyone have a lovely Sunday. See you in church at some point, maybe. Be well. And if you haven't already, buy your tickets for the St. Patrick's Dinner, which is next week. Also, let's enjoy it and have fun. All right, bye.